Today, the new authorities appointed by the Donald Tusk government entered the headquarters of the state television Telewizja Polska and the Polish press agency. To be honest, I have not seen this decree or resolution of the extraordinary general meeting in the form of Minister Szenkiewicz. I have not seen it with my eyes. I was shown some piece of paper with information from Minister Szenkiewicz as I was dismissed. Due to the actions taken by the new authorities at the headquarters of public Polish television, TVP, law and justice parliamentarians carried out a parliamentary inspection. Yesterday there was a scuffle with men of unknown identity. MP Joanna Borowiak was injured in the scuffle and with her arm in a sling, she was eventually taken to hospital. <laughs> Several hundred people spontaneously gathered in front of the TVP headquarters in protest against a forceful takeover of public media. Protests were also held in front of regional TVP branches. And this is what it looked like in the city of Popno. On the same day that TVP info signal was switched off, the Migration Pact was adopted in Brussels, which the United Right government had disagreed with from the beginning. The section of the public who watched TVP info didn't learn about it as TVP info had stopped broadcasting. They want to hide the fact that the Migration Pact was adopted. Today it was announced and they want to let in Islamic illegal immigrants. We will never agree to that. They want to take away the ability to report on it. Politicians of sovereign Poland are filing a notice with the prosecutor's office against Prime Minister Donald Tusk, Culture Minister Bartłomiej Sienkiewicz, as well as Piotr Zemla, who was named chairman of the TVP supervisory board yesterday. Crimes involving, among other things, firstly, assault on the state system and exceeding powers, secondly, assault on a public official, thirdly, illegal seizure of a television signal and fourthly causing significant damage to public property. Journalists who used to work at public television are still at Povstance of Warszawy Square in the public television building. According to media reports, people assigned by Minister Bartłomiej Szynkiewicz are expected to show up there at other times as well. A shooting has occurred at the Charles University building in Prague. Police confirmed that 10 people were killed and 25 wounded. The attacker was shot dead. Media reports that a rescue helicopter has been dispatched to the scene. A dramatic rescue operation is underway with new ambulances still arriving. Footage showing the panicked crowd has begun to flow online. Tourists and residents can be seen fleeing from nearby streets as well as the Charles Bridge. A photo of the student evacuation has also emerged, showing students running with their hands up. The entire area of the incident was sealed off by uniformed officers. The media reported that the attacker was said to have fired from a balcony on the top floor of a building in Yam Palach Square. The area houses the Faculty of Philosophy at Charles University and the Academy of Art, Architecture and Design. After two days of incessant rainfall and severe flooding in various districts of Tamil Nadu state, at least 10 people have been killed and dozens are considered missing. Communications in the region are paralyzed. People are trapped in their homes, workplaces and even on trains. The cataclysm has hit the state as it recovers from the devastation caused by cyclone Migjom, which hit the coast earlier this month. Nearly 50 millimeters of rain per square meter fell in Tamil Nadu from Sunday to Monday. 20 times more than usual for this time of year. Local media reports that some 500 passengers traveling to the capital Chennai were stuck for 36 hours on a train between stations. Food is being distributed by helicopters. Today's attack shows that Hamas, the dominant Palestinian Islamist group, has retained some rocket capabilities despite the weeks of the Israeli military operation. The alert disrupted a meeting between French Senate President Gerard Larcher and Israeli opposition leader Yair Lapid. The French delegation had to hastily leave the meeting room and go to a shelter. Hamas's armed wing said it fired rockets in response to the Israeli killing of civilians. At the same time, the group's political leader was holding truce talks in Cairo. The attack was likely intended as a signal that the 10-week war that has ravaged much of Gaza has not destroyed the militant strike capability. Despite December being the busiest period of the year for Santa, he made a stop at the Eiffel Tower Christmas Market on December 20th to greet tourists young and old. A dozen blue and white chalets adorned with wreaths and surrounded by decorated Christmas trees have been installed on the first floor of the tower. To all the children of the world, I wish a very Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. 
Children in particular were surprised to meet Santa in Paris when he should be preparing Christmas presents at the North Pole. It was a surprise to see Santa Claus at the Eiffel Tower because he's not normally supposed to be here. I can't wait. It's the Christmas spirit starting to work on everyone. It's nice. You just feel the Christmas spirit. Everyone's happy. Everyone's in a good mood. Everyone's enjoying themselves. Really feel, you know, the atmosphere over here. It's really wonderful. Sitting at 59 meters or 194 feet above ground level, this Christmas market is the capital's highest. It is also the first time the most visited monument in the world has held this type of event. In the chalets, market goers can buy local products like honey and mustard while enjoying a cup of hot chocolate or mulled wine. The Eiffel Tower Christmas market runs until the 15th of January and is open during the tower's opening hours.